Hey, look at we have a brand new chapter. Go math chapter. That's right, lesson 8.1. We're looking at a completely new topic. And look at this topic right here. We have divide fractions and whole numbers. That's what we're going to be looking at now. And let's go ahead and take a look at our essential question. How do you divide a whole number by a fraction and divide a fraction by a whole number? Woo. Okay, we're also going to be looking at a couple of mathematical practices here. Mathematical practice 3 and 5. And I actually have them right here. Mathematical practice 3 says construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. We'll look at that. And, of course, mathematical uh, practice 5 is going to use appropriate tools strategically. So, let's take a look. We have the materials. We have some fraction strips. Let's take a look. A it says Mia walks a two-mile fitness trail. She stops to exercise every one-fifth mile. How many times does Mia stop to exercise? Why should we use division to even solve a problem? Is what I'm thinking right here. You know, when you think about division, we, in this problem here, we need to actually find how many groups of one-fifth can be made from this two. And this two, this two mile is like our hole right here. Now she's going to be stopping every fifth mile. So we need to know how many groups of those one-fifth miles. We've drawn this number line from 0 to 2 to represent Mia's two-mile walk. By the way, Mia, you're very famous. Woo! All right. So we're going to divide our number line into fifths to show those breaks within the walk when Mia exercises. So how many fifths? So there's one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. Every one of these is going to count as a group of one-fifth. Here we have a group of one, right? Eight, nine, ten. So there are ten one-fifths within that, those two holes. Now it says here, skip count by fifths from zero to two to find that two divided by one-fifth. There are ten one-fifths in two holes. And that's what we did. We took the two and we divided it by one-fifth. So we're just starting to meet our objective here in our essential question of dividing a whole number by a fraction. That says you can use this relationship between multiplication and division to explain and check your solution. So let's record and check the quotient. Again, reminder, quotient is that answer within a division problem. So if we have 2 divided by 1 fifth was equal to 10, and that's because, if you look here, that's because 10 times 1 fifth equals 2. Now this we've already done. 10 over 1 times 1 fifth. Remember, this is just a whole number represented as a fraction, giving us 10 over 5, and then of course 10 divided by 5 equals 2, bringing us that is why this is true. So Mia stops to exercise 10 times. Now it says Roger has two yards of string. He cuts the string into pieces that are one-third yard long. How many pieces of string does Roger have? A model two, that two yards of string, using two whole fraction strips. I think we have some down here. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's my two yards of string side by side. And then, then place one-third strips to fit exactly under. All right, well, let's go ahead and start doing that. We'll put one here, and I'll start making a bunch of these. In fact, let me just go ahead and put that one there, and I'm going to just make him an infinite cloner. There we go. So we can drag one across. So here's, here's another one, and here's another one. That fits exactly under. So there are six one-third size pieces in two holes. Record and check the quotient. Well, it says two divided by one-third is equal to 6 because 6 times 1 third equals 2. So Roger has 6 pieces of string. I like it! Boy, I thought this whole dividing a whole number by a fraction was going to be a little complicated. I'm going to say it. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yes, it's wonderful. Let's go on to the next page. So draw conclusions. So when you divide a whole number by a fraction, how does the quotient compare to the dividend? Explain. Well, let's think about that last problem. We had two, was it yards of string? And we were dividing it. We divided by one-third, and we got an answer of six. Now, the quotient is the six, and the dividend is the two. So the quotient is definitely larger. It's greater than the whole number. I wonder why that is. Well, maybe, maybe because, you know, we have this whole number, 
because we're dividing the whole number by a fraction, like pieces of it, it appears that the number of parts it takes to make up each whole is going to be larger. So you need more of the fraction, more of these pieces, these parts, to get back to your two. That's why that number six is larger. Okay, I've explained that. I'm going to type that up in my supersonic speed. Ding! And voila, here we go. The quotient is greater than the dividend. I noticed uh, when I divided a whole number by a fraction, it took more parts to make up that whole. Okay, apply. Explain how knowing the number of fifths in that first problem, in number one, could help you find the number of fifths in two. Well, if I know how many fifths there are in one, so then I can multiply that number by two to find the number of fifths in two. So in this problem, if there are five fifths in one whole, then I could take the five and multiply that by the two, which would give me 10. So let's me with my supersonic speed. Let's go ahead and write down that understanding. Ding! And here we go. So if I know the number of fifths in one whole, I can multiply that number by two to find the number of fifths in two holes. Nice. Describe how you would find four divided by one fifth. Okay. I think what I would do here, since I already know there's five fifths in one whole, I can multiply four to find the number of fifths in four. Four times five is 20. And that means four divided by one fifth would equal 20. Let me write those thoughts down. So since I know there are five fifths in one whole, I can multiply four by five to find the number of fifths in four holes. Four times five is 20. So that must mean, therefore, four divided by one fifth is equal to 20. This is make connections. You can use fraction strips to divide a fraction by a whole number. Let's look at Kalia shares half of a package of clay equally among herself and each of two friends. What fraction of the whole package of clay will each friend get? Well, it says here, we place a half strip under uh, a whole strip to show the half package of clay. So here the model shows us this here. So it says find three fraction strips all with the same denominator that fit exactly under the half inch strip. And here you can see that we have three that fit underneath there. So each piece is how much of the whole? Well, this looks like it's half. That would mean three. So another half times two would equal six. So each piece is actually one six of the whole. So each one of these would be one six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, record and check the quotient. So one half divided by three will be equal to one six because we take the half and you're breaking this into three equal pieces is going to equal one six. One six, one six, one six together would give us back, bring us back to one half because one six here times three would equal one half. So each friend will get blank, and that's going to be one six because she was two friends and herself, and that was right there, that half clay, and I like how they did that up here as well. And what do we have? Think how much of the whole in each piece when the half is divided into three equal pieces. Okay, my friends, again, another video has come to its end, or its demise. It's right at the end. But you know what? More math videos will come. Build it, and they will come. Hey, now I want you to live long.